Now, John Coleman, as we know, is one of the longest serving managers in the Football League, a combined total of more than 20 years with Accrington Stanley. But one of our other uh, county's recognisable names is celebrating 25 years in charge this week or even today. Uh, that's the manager, owner, and just about everything else of Bake Up Borough, the one and only Brent Peters. Well, Adam Cottier went along to the Northwest Counties Club today to speak to Brent about reaching a quarter of a century at the helm. Well, do you know what, Adam? It's, it's a strange one, really, because every day is the same at, at Bake Up, every day I'm here. Do it. It's not the same because I'm doing different things. But I've never really thought about it until people have, have reminded me and then I've been getting so many messages. I mean, like today, one came and said uh, from a guy I don't really even know, but it was a lovely message. You know, it came. It said, "You're a top man. Uh, you've done. You've changed the, the 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 kind of the face of Bake Up, and hopefully you'll have a great season." So little things like that mean a lot. You know, it just starts to come back and. You know, some of the words that people have used, it kind of gets you a little bit emotional. And that kind of gives me a bit of a reminder that, wow, 25 years, who'd have thought? It's a life's work, isn't it? Because your career goes in football goes a long way further back than that 25 years. Well, it does. I remember starting out, I was, I was quite close with Frank Casper and Martin Dobson at the time when I, was, uh, when I started out. And I was at Bury Football Club as a uh, youth team coach. And I remember working with the, um, it was then the Lancashire League, and it was the um, A and B team. And I was running the, the B team along with the, the late, great Ray Pointer. You know, yeah. what a name from the past. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, uh, them, them were the days then down at Bury when, Martin Dobson was the manager and Frank Casper was uh, assistant manager and there was Ray Pointer, who I was working with, and everybody at Bury had to do... Uh, you didn't just do your job, you had to do other jobs. You know, it epitomises what, what basically I have to do here. That probably got me in a good groovy grounded uh, Bury Football Club at the time. What do you feel you've done for people over the, the years as a human being, away from being a football manager as well? Uh, I've, I've tried to help people the best I can. You, you know, a football manager, you, you, you're kind of the front of... No matter what level you are, you're kind of the front. And I have to talk football because that's been my life. And, and when you're dealing with, with all kinds of characters of footballers, total different characters, and as a manager, you've got to be able to handle all the different characteristics of people. Probably one of my strengths and is is man management. This is kind of I am a people's person, you know. Like I've, I was brought up on a council estate. Of, you, you know, my mum and dad worked hard for their for everything that they had. Uh, I've had to work hard for everything they had. I was an only lad, an only person, you know, the, that they had. And I've seen the struggles that that, that my mum and dad had in in life, and other people have had, and you know. I've just tried to work hard and, and be honest and I've tried to pass that kind of everything that uh, I've learned along the way back to others when, you know, my players, if they've been in trouble or they've had issues or, you know, financial issues or personal issues, I'm kind of a person that they can come and speak to, you know, private, confidentially, and, and that's happened in the past. That's happened quite a few times with, with, with people that's played under me. Take us back to 1997, then, when, when you came here. What were your hopes and aspirations at that time, and what was the football club like? I actually came here from... I was working with uh, Curry Dixon, former Chelsea in England at Doncaster Rovers. Appointed as assistant manager at Doncaster, and uh, our remit was, you've, whatever happens, you've got to keep Doncaster Rovers in the Football League. And bottom line is, we did. Yeah. Anyway, so they, they were good days at, at Doncaster, but they, they like all clubs... Down at the bottom end, do they suffer? They were suffering financial difficulties, and uh, they ended up going into um, administration. And when they went into administration, even though there was like a an, ar an arrangement on for me to carry on, I was finding it tough because the 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 the, the money kind of 
as happens, uh, wasn't coming through like it should have come through. I had a furniture removal and storage business in the Rosendale Valley, so I was I was commuting every day to Doncaster. There was only one day I didn't go, and that was, uh, well, the two days I didn't go, there were Thursday and Sunday were the two days that I didn't go into Doncaster. Um, the rest of the time we were there and we were commuting back and obviously we trying to run a business. So it, 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 it really clutched at my my heartstrings because one of me wanted to be still remain in the football league but I knew that I couldn't sustain what I was I, I was doing so I kind of um, reluctantly had to resign my, my position at, for, at the start of a, a new season so for the first month of a new season I wasn't I wasn't kind of I was out of football how did that feel being out of football yeah it was tough it was tough. I didn't, you know, I, I, I just felt like, you know, now I'm going to be having to apply for yeah. other positions. So it, 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 it was kind of tough. But there were lads that had played for me previously, were playing here at Baker Borough, that had played, uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, when I were at Rossendale United. So they, uh, they were, they, they, I remember that I'd come watching Bake Up a few times, and um, they were the, the, the whole place was a shambles. They, yeah. they, I, I, in fact, I used to criticise the club. I'd say to the lads like, "What are you doing at Bake Up? They've got nothing to offer. You know, the pitch is on a slope. It's like the sh there's nothing around. There's no perimeter fencing. The sheep wandering on the pitch. And honestly, I'm not I'm not exaggerating. It was it was a shambles." It ended up where they got beat on the on. The, I remember it. They 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 gone to Tetley Walker on the Saturday and they got beat ten nil at Tetley Walker. And uh, one or two of them were going mad in the changing room. The, the, the then manager and saying to the committee, "Look, look, you need to go and speak to Brent Peters." And uh, he's 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 not in football. He's go and speak to Brent Peters. And Frank Manning, the late Frank Manning, who was Mister Bakeup Borough, and for me will always remain Mister Bakeup Borough. You know, he'd been here a long, 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 long time. They spoke to Frank Manning and Frank Manning said, listen, Brent Peters is, you know, if he was alive now, he'd tell you this. This is exactly what he said. He said, Brent Peters won't come to Bake Up Borough. He said he's been at Lincoln, Rosendale United. He's been at Borough. He's been at, he's been at, at Accrington Stanley. He's not going to come to this football club. And one or two of the lads like Linton James, who's Matty James and Reese James's dad, who was here playing at, 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 at Bake Up, uh, gone to him and said, no, you've got to speak to him. He, he, he will, he'll, you know, speak to him. He'll come, he's a football man. So it ended up, I remember I was I was uh, out on a Saturday night and I was in a, they knew where I used to go drinking. I used to go drinking at a, a public house in uh, further down the valley called the Red Lion at Ayrclough Old, where quite a few of the former Burnley players and that used to congregate in there. You know, it was a footballer's pub at the time. And I remember being in there on a Saturday night and who walked in with Mr Frank Manning and a, a guy called, another director called Graham Schofield. And, uh, oh, just the man we want to speak to. So, <laughs> on Saturday night in the pub. <laughs> so, anyway, like, do you fancy? And the, the next game was they were playing Oldham Town, who was... Uh, uh, on the Tuesday, so this were on the Saturday. They got beat with Tetley Walker on the Saturday. Sat that Saturday night, they come to source me out when I'm in the Red Lion. And on the Tuesday, uh, they were playing the top of the league, who were unbeaten at the time, was at Oldham Town. And they said, "Will you just uh, do you not fancy just coming helping us out, you know, for a few games?" And I went, "Listen, I'm not doing anything. I'll do my best. I'll come, but." I'm going to tell you now, I will be applying for other jobs and if there's any jobs come available, but I'll help you out. So lo and behold, um, that was on the Saturday. On the Tuesday, we were playing Oldham Town, and I always remember it. So I, I, I tweet one or two things, brought a, quickly over the, them a couple of days, signed one or two players on, and... Uh, you know, we gave a good, creditable account to ourselves on the on the Tuesday against Oldham Town. We didn't, we didn't. I didn't. I thought we drew the game, but we didn't. We lost the game two nil, but two nil to ten nil. You know, they're a massive difference. And then from then, I kicked on. But when it come to the end of the season, I basically said, I we finished the season that season. Bake up had no points on the board when I walked through the door, and that, that season we finished mid table. So I thought that were a, you know. A success, you know, basically. But the place had nothing going for it. It was, 
it was horrendous. So basically, at the end of that season, I turned around and said, look, I'd help you. I, I, I can't stay anymore. I mean, this facility we're in now, you know, you wouldn't have had your, your breakfast in it. It was a lock-up. It was, like, horrible. It was... I just said, you know, there's, it's got nothing going for it, the club. I'm sorry, Frank. As much as it means a lot to you, I've got to think about my career and I'm, I need to kind of move on. And he went, I always remember it. I can remember him locking them gates outside there at the bottom there and he's saying, it looks like it's the end of the club, Brent. And I went, what do you mean? He went, well, he said, nobody's interested. Nobody's interested in us. He said, we've got loads of debts. He said, we've got... We've got the council chasing us for money. We've got other people chasing us for money. We've got no money. We can't even... He said, we can't even get in the... Uh, uh, if people don't know, your entry to the FA Cup and FA Vars and all your main competitions, they, they, they like come probably at the worst time of any season because it's at the end of the season when you've got to pay the money to start for the next season. So he said, we can't even afford to, to enter them competitions because we've got no money. I went, listen, Frank, Frank, and I'd just sold my furniture removal and storage business. Now, some people, you know, when they sell a business, they go and buy some property somewhere or buy, you know, go on on holiday or do whatever they have to do, look after the family and whatever. Well, I didn't really. I'm a football, passionate football person. And I went, listen, Frank, I'll tell you now, whatever happens... I'll make sure there's a backup borough. Let me have a look at these debts. Let me have a look at everything. So I ended up where I started to put some... I actually put paid off the quite a lot of the debts and then I made sure they were entered into the FA Cup the year after and, and the FA Vars and everything else. So I said, but I've done my bit. I'm still going. I'm not staying. I've done my bit. You've got to manage that now. But lo and behold, I'm still here 25 years on. What's your single greatest achievement at this football club? Keeping it going. Keeping it going. People don't understand. To keep a football club going is, especially in modern day, you know, especially when the, the Football Association brought in, you know, when they, when they brought in the introduction of, uh, as you know, to get into the Football League, it was always a closed shop because if you finish the bottom of the old fourth division... It was a re-election. But all the directors of the Football League clubs used to stick together and make sure that you got in. You know, the non-league clubs who were ambitious could not get in. But the FA somehow, some way, put a stop to that where they had the ideal pathway. Basically, once they introduced this pathway through the, the non-league sort of pyramid... Um, that made it difficult for all clubs because every club throughout, even at the, the bottom tier where we are, right the way through, has to have minimum standards of your ground regulations, not just your health and safety issues, but making sure that you, you, your ground is, uh, as in not your football playing surface, yeah, that's one part of it, but your stadium is up to the required standard for the level that you're playing at. So... What that was going to do, the teams that was happy just to be playing in a, in a competition, even though if they were languishing at the bottom of the league, they knew they weren't going to go anywhere. They knew that, you know, there, there, there were clubs like Bake Up, you know, that they didn't want to do anything to the ground. They didn't want to spend money on the facilities. They didn't. They, they just were happy to play and, and be founder members of the, you know, the uh, the Northwest Counties League and 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 just be a part of it and just ride along with everybody else but that stopped and when that stopped and you had to you, you know everybody had to have levels and 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 where it, it started to become a, a costly kind of hobby if you will that changed the face of football and that's when a lot of clubs kind of either they're still going today but they dropped out of the the english uh, pyramid you know, when I came to Bake Up Borough, this valley had Aslinden playing in the North West Counties League, had Whitworth Valley playing in the North West Counties League, Rosendale United, and, and obviously Bake Up Borough. And for one reason or another, they've, 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 they've gone. So to keep this club going and be at the level that we're at, 
just keeping the club going is my greatest achievement here. And every every day that I wake up and every day that this club keeps in existence is another day that is a success for me because it's 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 the great history, eighteen seventy nine. You know, it's it, it's it, it, it's keeping the club alive, and that is massive. You know, that far outweighs any any personal gain, any any trophies that are in the in the trophy cabinet keeping this because there's a lot of history with this football club and it's important that it remains and carries on. Probably if we look in football terms, probably one of the greatest achievements is, is you know, when I, I led them to a league championship when we won the, uh, back in the day, the Northwest Counties League was Division 1 and Division 2. As we know, they've restructured that now, so the, you've got the, the Division 1 is is the Premier League uh, and Division 2 is like they split it up and it's which is you, you know north and south so so basically when it was Division 1 and Division 2 my greatest achievement I would I would say was that 56 years that that Bake Up Bar hadn't achieved anything I think it was back in I think it was about 2002 uh, where we won the league you know, winning that championship was the first time uh, for 56 years for a club of this standing was was a massive achievement for me. And I, I was I was made up for for and he's there on that picture there, Mr. Frank. And I'd say he's ba- Mr. Bake up. He's there holding that cup and he's proudly holding that cup. Um, Are you that, not Mr. Bake up? Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not putting it down as Mr. Bake up. I'd <laughs> say Mr. Manning were were Mr. Bake up. Yeah. You know. I, <laughs> Maybe I've taken the baton from him and ran with it, and I'm still running with it. So I, I probably have to be Mr. Baker. So that was it. That was obviously the start of things to come. A lot of clubs. There's a lot of clubs out there that haven't haven't had success on a football pitch. If they've been going and carried on going, but we've had plenty of success in my time here, in my 25 year. You know, we've been to, we've won a league championship. We've won two Challenge Cup trophies. We've been runners up in the uh, in a in a, in, a, in a, another cup final. I've been to five cup finals while I've been here. In five cup finals, we've won two. We finished runners up in the uh, uh, to AFC filed in the Lancashire Challenge Cup, which was a great, you know, even though it was a loss, I thought it was a great achievement because I once remember the late Eric Wally saying to me, you haven't done anything, no matter what you do in football, Brent, you haven't done anything unless you win that Lancashire uh, Challenge Cup. <laughs> That's what Eric Wally said to me. So I was desperate to win it. But listen, when we played, uh, we got to the Reebok final, uh, and we're playing AFC Fouled, who were a lot, what at the time, three leagues, four leagues above us. But we gave a good credibility mm. to ourselves where we've, uh, we, we, we only lost the game by, you know, it was 2-0 on the, on the night. You know, it could have been, a, you know, a lot worse, but it wasn't. You know, we, we set ourselves out. So we've achieved quite a bit in my, in my time here. And I think we could have achieved more, but it's difficult. It's not easy. You mentioned there's been difficulties. What's been the saddest time? For you at this football club, when I when I I kind of said that I was late, and then I started to put I, I sold my furniture removal business. So in the end, I started to get into negotiations about about the club and 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 kind of taking the club over. And there was there was lots of issues. There was lots of skeleton. Honestly, it's not like buying it where you buy a bit and everything's up front, and you've got you you know whether it's worth doing or not worth doing. And in football, you can't wait. Time doesn't stand still. That's kind of what it's like in football. You've got deadlines to meet. And if you don't meet a deadline, you miss a season and then it goes on and that's how it is. And I kind of think here, there was a lot of skeletons jumping out the cupboard. There was, there was, there was a lot of things wrong. The lease uh, of the facility wasn't right. Uh, you know, I were getting told one thing off the people who, who was involved at the club. They were saying that, you know, the place were licensed. And uh, they had the, and I was I was desperate to get copies of the license so they, they would sell beer, and th- that weren't forthcoming. There was a lot, and the, I were having endless meetings with the council to try and get the lease sorted out, and the council like I wanted to 
at first I wanted to buy the the, the freehold and one of the councillors had turned around and said, yeah, it, I could do it. But then when when we sort of agreed everything and I put more, kept putting money into it, to, you know, because it don't come cheap. You've got to have architects, you've got to have solicitors. So I had the architects, I had the solicitors. And then all of a sudden, the general election had come in, and they they turn around, and the the, the councils that were, that were agreeing one thing, they get voted out, and then a new party had come in. For a long, long time, I was in fighting with the council and still having to put a team on that park, and 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 it went on till 2010. So this were this this argument started in 2000, and it was 2010 when eventually the party that were in at the time were conservatives, and the leader of the council I knew his family very very well a guy called uh, Swain and he, he said to me Brent we'll bring your solicitor down we all want to meet him we want to get around the table and he, I remember going down to Futures Park and in the first like probably 10 minutes of the there was a cross argument going on between my solicitor and the council solicitor who happened to be the assistant chief executive and it were all about scoring brownie points and I'm listening to it and I'm going listen can I stop you there? All I am, I'm a work for, I'm, I, this is all over my head. I'm trying to save and keep going an old established football club that means a lot to the community of Baycourt. I said, that is all I'm here for. I don't want to listen to this. So in the end, Mr. Swain turned around, who was the leader of the council, he said, have you any objections in your solicitor leaving this room? And... Um, me and you and my our solicitor, I was the assistant chief executive, he leaves the room and me and you will talk man to man. And I went, not at all. And we just talked in layman's terms. And you know what? We came to an absolute agreement. And he said, Brent, I'll never get you 99 year lease, but what I will get you, and he was true to his word, he said, I'll get you 75 year lease. And he said, in 2010, what a success that were, because that was the time, not in... 97 when I took over, not in 2000 when I actually took over trying to run the organisation. Once I got that secured in 2010, that lease, that meant that that was the start of the future of Bake Up Borough Football Club because that was, the, that was a great lease. But that meant that I could go to people like I went to Brian, the late Brian Boys, who was the chairman of Boys, who were still our sponsors. Uh, main partners today uh, that have like stood shoulder to shoulder since I took over. I went and spoke to Brian, who was fantastic, to come on board as a, as, a, as being our sponsor. There's nothing to do with the football club. A lot of people think they have, but they haven't. But he was our partner. You know, every year he would put money into this this the club to help keep it going, and that was the start. And that's when I said. 2010 is the start that we could start to build something at this football club. And that was the infighting. I went through the dark days leading up to that. I went through a bankruptcy. And uh, a lot of people probably don't know that. I went through a bankruptcy and it was either the club or me. And I went on and I, where a lot of people had just like pulled the plug on the club, I didn't. I, I made sure it were me. And one thing that I want on record, and you can look through all the archives, you can look through all the press releases, it was all there, all, all on the placards down the valley. My, my statement was, Brent Peters will rise from the ashes, Bake Up Borough never will. And that was, that was a dark period for me because, unfortunately, circumstances dictated. I tried to do what I wanted to do, I didn't realise all these skeletons had jump out of the cupboard at me. They said that the, the place were licensed. I tried to fight to get the licence and copies of it. They weren't forthcoming. I had to go to court and ask the court. And I asked the court, listen, I've just invested in into Bake Up Borough Football Club, but I'm struggling to get certain information. I'm struggling to get documents. Can you can you provide these in the court, which absolutely flattened me, turned round to me and said, they're not licensed. I went, you, they're not licensed, no? He said, and they, were, they got struck off of being a limited company probably about two years before I, I got involved here. They'd been struck off uh, for some 
misdemeanours. And they said and they've had their work licence taken off them, so they're not I said, but they're, ser they're serving beer. Well, they're not licensed. So I said, what do I do now? They said, you'll have to reapply, but reapplying for a licence isn't it just like getting a licence. You can't just get one like that. So I kind of invested into doing kind of that side of the club up and to get a licence, and I made all that. I'd already invested in doing it. And when they came and the police got involved and the and the fire got involved and the health got involved, they said we had to do something with this side of it. Well, I'd not budgeted for that. Things like that I hadn't been budgeted for, and it ended up where did a walk away, I could have easily walked away. I remember I sat down in that room and I brought my heart out on my own. What have I done? Excellent. Massively, I would do nobody else here, and I just thought, what have I done? You know, and I could have either a, a jump ship then and just left it and gone, but I'm a winner, and I'm a fighter, and I and and and, and I decided to fight it, and I did, and that's what I said. Bake up Borough would not rise from the ashes, but Brent Peters will. And in that period after, I kind of I went working. I have a class one. HGV licence and I've also got a PSV licence and I went out at night working for TNT through the night, we were driving through the night and I'd come off my shift in the morning and I'd drive straight back up here, I had two caravans on site and I'd carry on doing all my work here because we didn't have ground staff or anything like that so I'd get on the ground, I'd start doing the jobs I have to do preparing for a game and then when I get tired I'd go and get my head down in the caravan, have a few hours kip and then carry on with my work and then at night I'd go home with my family and just see them and have, 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 have my meal and then I'd be setting off down the road at, uh, to Eccles, that's where I were based, our depot, and I'd be setting off for 10 o'clock to go on a shift at night driving a wagon again and all my salary from that company came into this football club. There can't be many more people more dedicated than, than you, Brent. Um, 25 years, you one of the longest serving managers in the world, I think it's fair to say. What do you hope the future holds? How long... Will you be at this football club, do you think? Or do you hope to be? Oh, well, I mean, I, 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 listen, the, the most important things I've got, I'm sat here today, uh, I'm sat here today and I've, sat, I've got three grandchildren. I've got Casey Lee, who's um, 17. I've got Ali Jack, that's uh, 14. And I've got Tommy James, who's three-year-old. And the most important thing for me is the future of this football club must be... I haven't worked 45, uh, 25 years at this football club and put in the time and effort that I've put in to see this football club just go on the rug come from be beneath me. It's important that this football club and the legacy goes on for as long as it can go on. So, you know, I've got to look at the future. It is not the future's not with me. You know, my time is is building it and, and keeping it and making sure it's, it's here for the next generation and the generation after. And to be able to do that, it's important that I put things in place to make sure that that will stay and remain the same and they've got the same mindset as what what the granddad had and um yeah and that, that that's that's what i've got to that's what basically we've we, we've got to try and achieve here you know it's uh rome wasn't built in a day it's small steps I've got some great support staff now at the club. We didn't have that at the beginning. You know, the, the current staff, of crop, crop of people I've got here are, are fantastic. You know, my family at home, um, they've been supportive. They think I'm absolutely mad and I could probably couldn't have done it with, with what I've done and I probably couldn't have done it without their support. You are know, you mad, Brent? In the nicest popular way, are you a bit crazy for football? That's well, that's my, my life, yeah, yeah, crazy. That's it. You know, there's a song going, there was a song, weren't it, Crazy Thing Called Love? Yeah. Well, it's a crazy thing called love and it's football. You know, when I when I see my, my allegiances, uh, 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 we're always, you can look at pictures around this this club 
I were brought up at Rosendale United. I lived on the council estate on the, where that ground was situated. My father, late father, was the director of Rosendale United. Growing up, I was a ball boy at Rosendale United. I've gone through, or even a ball boy, Rosendale United's greatest, one of the greatest achievements at Rosendale, they played Bolton Wanderers and the game was taken to Gig Lane and I was actually their official ball boy at Gig Lane and I grew up with the club and, you know, to 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 eventually in 93, that was the... That was the only reason and reason that I left Bury Football Club at, at the time because I was offered the chance to be the first team manager in 1993 of my hometown club and I felt then at that time, no matter what I ever do in football, wherever I ever go, I might always regret and never get another chance of taking over my hometown club, especially when they'd suffered a relegation. And... Uh, I decided to take the plunge and go in at Rosendale United. That was a club that I really loved. I did, I'll be honest, it's like Man City, Man, you know, Man City, Man United. You know, Bake Up, Rosendale, strong rivalries. You know, my heart, we were always with, with, with Rosendale United all the time. And to see that great club be no longer, and it's got houses on it, and it's no longer anymore, you know, I... I, I, I'm just so grateful that I've been able to, you know, in a small way, be able to do what I've done here at, uh, at, at Bake Up Borough. But I couldn't have done what I've done up to today at Bake Up Borough without the help and backing of some truly magnificent people like my family and like, you know, like we've got, since I walked into this football club, we've got Deborah, who's still here today. You know, she's been a rock, uh, you know, with regard to the football club. You know, we've now got our media team who are so professional in Steve Brown uh, and, 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 and a local guy in Andrew Knights, who's, uh, you know, I've got on board, who's part of that media team, but I've got him involved on the, on the business partnership side of the club and I've got him involved in... He's doing a terrific job, and and basically now, when more and more the community of the Rosendale Valley are buying into it, and um, long may that continue, because without their support and backing, you know, no matter how hard I try to work and I try to achieve things, you know, it's unachievable without without their backing and support, and it's massively important. 25 years ago today, Brent Peters managed his first game at Bake Up Borough. Congratulations, Brent. A brilliant, brilliant achievement. One of the world's longest serving football managers. Great, great guy. Um, such a, a character to have on our non-league programme many years ago now. And um, I totally wish you well, Brent. And I hope there's another 25 at the helm for you. 